Well, hello there. This is Virtual Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Welcome to another episode of Quick Wins. And in today's game, one of my club mates from Team Australia submitted this absolutely beautiful line against the French defense. And it makes use of a tactical approach that's on page 24 of my new book, 50 plus two chess quick wins. Uh, you can get it now on Amazon, where the bishop deflects the king from the defense of the queen. Uh, let's go take a look. So my, uh, uh, my subscriber has the white pieces and starts with e4 and black plays, boo, e6, the French defense. Now, of course, with the French, they're trying to now play uh, d5 to uh, take control of the center, very, very solid. And so the beginning of this line is the immediate c4. And this is the Steiner or the Steiner variation in the French. Very, very committal, but it's asking the question, are they really now going to play d5? Now, if they don't, you scuttle their development. Now, most people will still play d5, which is perfectly fine for, uh, for black. However, psychologically, we're now capture, capture. Uh, the, basically, the main line is to capture back here. And what happens is that we've taken the French player out of a closed positional uh, system into immediate uh, open center lines, which is generally not what the French defense player wants to play. If they wanted to play this, they would have just played one e5. Now in this position, rather than taking back, um, we now begin a very, very tricky line with queen a4, uh, a4 with check. Very, very interesting. Now, if white played queen b3, this would be the ortho schnapp gambit. However, here uh, this variation is trying to bait black into uh, playing bishop to d7. And black in this position does do that. It's a very, very natural move, development of the bishop with, uh, you know, well, seemingly winning tempo. And now white brings the queen back, back into the ortho schnapp position with an attack on that pawn. Effectively, this variant is trying to bait the bishop to come to this position. Again, very natural position. Now, two attackers on the pawn. Black's move is pretty obvious. Um, of course, no longer defended here. They should take. That is their best move. Taking that pawn out of the, uh, out of the attack seemingly just winning a straight piece, but of course this is in fact a fork. White now plays a very strong move in this position, which is bishop to c4, a battery now staring at the f7 pawn, and of course the queen is still looking at b7. Black now plays again a very natural move, defending that pawn, queen <laughs> to e7, and it's a blunder. The queen had to go to f6. However, the reason why f6 is better than e7 is a little bit obscure. The idea is after the queen goes to f6, when queen captures the b7 pawn, the queen can now go to c6. X-ray defense of the rook, uh, and basically inviting a trade of queens, which would be good for black. However, black was probably thinking, don't I already have x-ray defense of the rook with the bishop? Uh, and so here, um, the queen captures the b7 pawn with almost no thinking time, thinking a second, bishop c6, attacking the queen, x-ray defense of the rook, looks like a really good move, right? Except it's a blunder. It's a blunder because the queen now infiltrates along these weak light squares. The queen doesn't just have to take the rook. Queen to c8, excellent move with check, and black is now forced to bring the queen back. Only legal move, but now bishop captures the pawn on f7. Excellent move with check, 
and here black has only two legal moves. Either take the bishop, leave the defense of the queen and lose their queen. In this game, black couldn't countenance that. They move the king forward and that's a blunder. Do you see why? Queen e6, mate on move 10, good game, GG.